Chris and this is Regular Guy Training. So today we're actually going to go over the Primary Arms uh, Cyclops, their 1X with the ACSS reticle. Uh, this is not a secret, this has been out for a little while um, and it, it's, it's actually doing a lot of work. Um, you know, especially guys that need something that's actually going to work as far as just like reliability, like it needs to be a hold zero and that kind of stuff for pretty cheap. Now, uh, full transparency here. Uh, Dimitri asked me if I wanted to uh, review this, the Raptor, and the Aurora reticle on a 4-power ACOG, and I said yes, because he's done a, a tremendous amount of work fucking around with reticles and glass and that kind of stuff, and I wanted to see, you know, what there was to see. So, uh, in the middle of our little talks and that kind of stuff, I had a long phone conversation with him talking about different reticle types and what he's using this for, just so that I wasn't assuming anything, uh, and... Uh, at the same time, I let him know that if, you know, if it didn't meet standards or if there was something I didn't like about it, I wasn't pulling punches. So, he's aware of it, I'm aware of it, and now I can move on. So, first and foremost, this is a 1X uh, prism, prism type scope. And it is indeed a 1X scope. So, here's the deal, right? Uh, I'm going to go over feature set and that kind of stuff, and I'm going to talk about... A bunch of different things about it because there are a bunch of things that I do like but then you know obviously there's pros and cons to everything so we're just gonna see what happens from there um, so first and foremost uh, you can actually make this guy pretty much a true 1x because you can adjust this guy back here to your individual eye so for instance if you have a front sight tower on your AR type rifle or even a flipped up AR front sight um, you can get it to the point where that's pretty clear and your target area like 50-ish yards away is, is also clear. So it gets really, really damn close to a true 1X. Now, glass quality is not that of like an ACOGS and that kind of stuff, but, you know, it's also a $200 optic, so I'm not expecting it to have the clearest glass on the planet. Um, far as, you know, just individual... Uh, brightness settings on it and that kind of stuff because the reticle does illuminate. Uh, not the biggest fan uh, because it does it you know it doesn't get to uh, daylight bright like at all. But I will say that if I have some heavy shading and that kind of stuff during the day and I turn it on to like its max uh, brightness setting, it does contrast just enough for me to do the job that I'm trying to uh, that I'm trying to do. So it's functional and it does work, but the problem with this is that it annihilates batteries. Anybody that's used to uh, aim point or hollow sun battery life and that kind of stuff, it, this is not that. You have to make sure that it's shut off when you're not using it or you're going to kill a battery. Um, I don't even know what the battery life is, but I've already murdered a battery on this before. like it, Just illuminating and keeping it illuminated because I'm actually pretty just used to running dots at this point. Um, you know, you'll, you'll murder the battery in this thing, and it does take a, a 2032. So fairly standard in that regard. Um, as far as what you can see, as far as field of view and that kind of stuff, it's a 20 millimeter scope. So, okay, cool. Uh, that's enough, really, especially for what can pull off uh, near true 1X. So... You know, it's not like in your way or anything like that. And its individual footprint while it's riding on the rifle is not huge either. So that um, that does help. Speaking of footprint, it takes aim point T1 slash T2 mounts. Um, so for guys that don't want to go with hollow sun and want to go with something like this as like a starter before going to an aim point T2 or something like that, it'll take the same mounts as those. So if you get like a QD uh, from some place, uh, you can you know, pull it off of this guy and put it on your more expensive guy when you eventually get it. So there's that. As far as adjustments for elevation and windage, we have a 0.5 uh, minute of angle per individual click, uh, which is perfectly adequate uh, to have half minute uh, clicks on your elevation and windage. And you can actually see here though that these scope cap leashes are a colossal pain in the ass. I know why they're here, I know why they exist, but they bind up so hard, I would rather just put these friggin' things on tight, leave them tight, and all of that. Again, very likely because I'm just used to like hollow suns, aim points, that kind of deal. Um, not a big fan of leashes, especially since everything I just described. But yeah, uh, 0.5 adjustments, perfectly adequate, and it works very well. 
for what its intent is for, and that's for like a 1x. You know, we're not talking about a 1 to 4 or a 1 to 6 or higher. Okay, so half minute works just fine. Uh, especially since that's pretty much industry standard for anything that takes these mounts. So there's that. Okay, so not so bad. Uh, but now we're going to talk about, you know, the bread and butter of this optic and actually many others that primary arms has turned loose, and that would be the ACSS reticle. And I'm going to share an image of that with you now. So, with the reticle being what it is, right, um, it's not as enhanced as other, like, variants of this reticle or something similar. Uh, it's a very simple portion, or it's a very simple version of the reticle, and that's exactly what something like this needs. You don't want busy glass on a 1X. But, you know, tip of the sh uh, very tip of the chevron, and you can pause this and go back to the image I shared uh, if you're inclined to, but very tippity top of that chevron there, uh, we have our 50 to 200. Once you get it zeroed at 50, it's highly advised that you go and cure at 200. Um, inside edge of that uh, particular chevron, you're looking at 300, and the open space between the inside wings, you're looking at 400. Uh, and, and centered up, of course. So, that being said, um, what is kind of cool about this too is that there's a little more information that you can pull from it. Uh, because you have like your three-quarter friggin' donut ring that you can see on the image that I posted up. Uh, and that actually serves two different functions. The outside edges can, can give you an 8 mile an hour lead. And uh, the donut itself can be used as, you know, a CQB holdover type thing where it just looks like a busy red dot when you just whip it out there, right? Um, in addition to that, you have a range finding tree. And that is gauged for typical height of uh, military age male. Um, and again, if you reference the image that I posted up, I'll put another one up here. Uh, the two largest distances is three, and then you have four, and then five, and it, and it you know graduates upward. The smaller that those uh, the smaller that those individual horizontal lines get, but you're using them to gauge the height of an average military age male at those at those varying distances, and that corresponds with what hold you're going to take when you're shooting with this. So, okay, great. Now, as far as reliability and that kind of stuff, uh, we fired uh, multiple thousands of rounds through this. I had actually completely lost count because it was riding on one of uh, my demo rifles, and a bunch of students had used it and that kind of thing. Um, it's come out to four classes now, and it's been shot a little bit. Uh, not enough to really scar it up, but it has been used. Uh, the entire time that it's happened, no zero loss, uh, no shift in point of impact. Uh, once, it, once we put it on a zero, it stayed on that zero. No illumination problems unless you forgot to turn off the battery and that kind of thing. Um, and I'm not the only person to say this. There are some wacky ass tests out there of dudes going to like crushing depths as far as what optics are concerned and they survive and that kind of thing. It's not a secret that the prism scopes are themselves pretty tough. Uh, so, <clears throat> now there's a long list of reasons to actually really like this thing. And I understand guys that do like them. Uh, and I'm not going to sit there in front and act like there isn't a reason to like these individual scope, uh, you know, like 1x prism scopes and that kind of stuff. But I am going to give you my real opinion on it. Um, and the real opinion on it here is I'm not a fan. Uh, I'm not a fan and it's not because that, there, that the functionality isn't there. It's not that it is unusable because it is. And you can get work done with it and you can do well with it. Uh, for, my, for my individual preferences and that kind of stuff. Um, if I'm going to pick an optic like this, I'm probably just going to go with uh, the baby cog that has the same reticle in it that um, I don't have to worry about batteries or anything like that for illumination. I can go with covering or uncovering a fiber optic cable to where the illumination is there, it's constant, and I can make it more or less without murdering a 2032. Uh, the glass on that's much cleaner. Yeah, it's way more expensive. It really is. But... For me personally, I, I, again, I understand why guys go after this, especially for price point and that kind of thing. But uh, me personally, uh, if I'm going to go with a 1X, um, last I checked, the bombs didn't drop, zombies aren't walking around and that kind of shit. I can still go to the store and get some Duracell 2032s. 
Uh, if that isn't the case, I'm looking at this more, but realistically speaking, if I'm going to do something 1x or near 1x, um, I'm going to go uh, to an Aimpoint Hollow Sun, and if I'm using an optic similar to this, I'm probably going to go with the, uh, the baby cog that has the same reticle. Um, also, with the lesser illumination, or if I turn it off and I'm just using the black reticle, uh, that is significantly harder to see. Uh, and my vision's always been good. It's, uh, I've always been able to pick out contrast really well. I'm actually kind of light sensitive in the eyes. And after a while, it starts getting really difficult to use that reticle as it's intended. So, I don't know. For some reason, it's much easier to use it with, with uh, the baby ACOG that Trigicon has with the same reticle in it. Uh, but for some reason, this is significantly harder to use. And realistically speaking, it has nothing to do with the mount because, you know, I, I can get lower, that's not a big deal. Or if it really was that big of a deal to me, I could have traded out the mount with one of the bajillion friggin' T2 style mounts that I have lying around. Uh, to me, personally, individually, I'm not a huge fan of it because it seems to be rather slow. It murders those batteries. And while the contrast is there, as far as illumination is concerned, it's not enough for me, personally. But, that said, that's me. I am not a huge fan of it. Other guys are gigantic fans of these individual scopes because of all of the features that I've listed just now. Um, and I can see why. Like, I can understand why. They are tough, they're reliable, they're very affordable. And they're adaptable if you've already got, you know, like QD mounts for some hollow sun just sitting around. You know. So they're, you know... As much as I would like to sit there and be like, buy something better, I would change that up to buy something faster. That's me, though. You know, guys that can rock the house with these are going to rock the house with these and not give a fuck about what I say. But that's me personally. And, um, you know, that, that, that is what it is. You know what I mean? I mean, you guys have seen me test a variety of different optics and that kind of stuff, and it's very obvious what my preferences are. This just happens to not be it. So, it's one of those few times where I really don't like it, but if you're looking at it and, you know, you're serious about it and you want to go get it, I'm not going to stop anybody. So, uh, that's me personally. Uh, yeah, if you guys want to check, uh, if you guys want to check out the schedule, I'm adding classes as we speak. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that, got, that has to get added up, and actually the second I'm done here, I have to actually go to Mississippi. Uh, other various states are getting added and that kind of stuff, like, uh, like uh, Michigan, Kentucky, a vehicle class got added. Uh, we're going back to Florida, uh, talking about uh, Pennsylvania at the moment. So there's a lot of different places that we're going to go to. Uh, in addition to that, you know, we also have um, what you call it. Uh, the Patreon thing is still open, forty-one dollars a month gets you as much training as you want to. Or if you just want to throw a couple bucks at us to make this a little bit easier as far as the YouTube stuff, especially with the AMO crunches that we've got going on, it's greatly appreciated and it benefits more than just the channel. Um, and on top of on top of that, uh, I'm also going to post a link to this because we do have patches now. Uh, one with, uh, especially like it, it, right now, it's really simple. It's just our logo on a black patch, and it's all Velcro and that kind of stuff. So you can check that out if you want to. Um, and you know, for the rest of you, I appreciate you watching. And remember, regular guys fire is the last defense against tyranny. Be easy.